Our next presenter is Dr. Hamid Hanema. He is the Chair of Petroleum and Natural Gas Engineering Department in New Mexico Tech. His educational background includes a bachelor's degree in petroleum engineering from Petroleum University of Technology, a master's degree in reservoir sciences and engineering from the French Institute of Petroleum, and a doctorate in petroleum engineering from Texas A&M University. His research in this field has revolved primarily around enhanced oil recovery, unconventional oil and gas resources, and miracle modeling. Dr. Hanima will present to us the effect of exposure time and crude oil composition of low salinity water flooding, and he will tell us about some of the factors controlling rock weatherability during low salinity water injection. So thank you, Dr. Hamid Hanema, for being here with us today. And to the audience, remember to send all your comments and questions on the chat so they can be discussed later on the panel session. Hello, uh, I hope all of you are doing well and are safe. Uh, my name is Dr. Hamid Rahnema. I'm the Associate Professor and Chair of Petroleum and Natural Gas Engineering Department uh, in New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology, or New Mexico Tech in short. Uh, New Mexico Tech is located in the state of New Mexico, USA, city of Socorro. And this presentation is uh, being recorded on September 14, 2021. Uh, for IEA EUR technical collaboration uh, program. The, uh, the title of my presentation is Effect of Exposure Time and Crude Oil Composition on the Low Salinity Water Flooding. Uh, in this presentation, I would like to um, briefly go over the background and some of the suggested mechanism of low salinity water floodings and also I want to share some of our recent experimental studies that we have done here in New Mexico Tech uh, on the low salinity water flooding. This is if it can uh, show us that the low salinity water injection is not new. In 1959, Martin et al. conducted a laboratory test for heavy oil recovery by fresh water injections. And he observed increasing in oil recovery uh, later on, he suggested that the clay, maybe the clay swelling or, or institute modification are being responsible for enhanced recovery. Uh, a similar uh, result uh, was reported in another study by Bernard et al. in 1967, in which he conducted a laboratory test involving the displacement of mineral oil by low salinity waters. Uh, he used the 1000 ppm in, in ICL um, uh, salinity for injected water. He observed that the, for, for, for the uh, water sensitive cores, in fact, those cores that are has a high percentage of the clay, uh, for those cores, for those cores, when injecting low salinity waters, higher oil productions can be observed. And more, interesting, and more interestingly, if you go back, uh, the field application of low salinity uh, uh, water injection dates back to the 1970s when the production data shows that unintentional improved, improved recovery from low salinity water flood. And there are a number of uh, field examples in the Power River Basin in Powaiming, which uh, was flooded with the water containing as low as 1000 ppm water salinity. And, um, but in general, uh, historically, little attention has been paid to the impact of the brine salinity on the water flood, uh, microscopic displacement efficiency, or the possibility of additional recovery by engineering the brine ion composition or so on. Later on, um, in the 1990s, uh, actually, Professor Morrow and his co-workers at the University of Wyoming conducted pioneering laboratory studies using experimental data. They investigated the influence of the brine composition uh, on oil recovery and found out that the injecting sufficiently low brine could potentially improve oil recovery. 
And since then, after they was uh, published, uh, this effect has been followed and investigated by many researchers who who like to um, uh, find out, the, uh, to identify, produce, or explain the physical and the chemical mechanisms behind the low salinity effects. And recently, uh, uh, this method has been tested in the pilot te in the pilot test. Uh, in the Alaska, uh, with, with, with the web et al. Uh, reporting the positive result from a single well test using the reactive tracer. The field data shows that the low salinity water injection uh, reduced the residual oil saturation near the well world. That was the very um, uh, important uh, field observations that shows the potential uh, positive impact of the low salinity. Uh, uh, I can say that based on the, light, uh, the literature review, which you can see that most of knowledge about this effect is, comes from the laboratory test, where we try to see the effect of a different different uh, parameters and different components on the low salinity. And then through, uh, through all of these uh, sensitivity studies, uh, results come up with the possible solutions or come up with the uh, possible mechanism that can explain this uh, loose salinity water injections in uh, different, uh, let's say, conditions. And um, hopefully come up with the kind of screening uh, the technology, the screening criteria uh, for field applications. So what we know and what we don't know, uh, and what is important and what is not important. Uh, in these slides, I want to go through some of the uh, factors affecting the low salinity water floodings. Uh, clay minerals. Uh, we know that the clay particles play important roles in the low salinity water injections. According to the several studies, the injection of the low salinity water enhances or recovery only in the cores contained in the clay, clay minerals. We have a different type of the clay. The reaction of these ty different type of the clay to the low salinity water are different. We see a very good positive uh, response uh, for the rocks that has a, let's say, elite, masculine, or the chloride clay particles. And we see a weak response uh, for the cores that contain, uh, containing, let's say, colonite uh, clay particles. Uh, but what, what we know is that the clay particles should present, right? Uh, for the sandstones cores without clay but containing dolomite crystals, also we see a positive response uh, from the uh, low salinity water injections. The other parameter which is important is brine. Numerous studies show that the uh, low salinity, uh, there should be a low salinity thresholds uh, to, in order to observe the incremental recovery. This number is somewhere between 2000, 1000 to 2000 ppm. That was different type of the cartoons. But which is significantly is lower than the uh, salinity of the formation brine sum. The next important parameter is crude oil. We know that the polar components uh, in the crude oil are necessary. From experiments with the refined oil, keeping all the parameters constant, we do not observe any extra recovery during when we are adjusting the salinity of the injection brine. Similar reports actually uh, was presented by Morris that indicating that the both acidic and the basic oils are usable for low salinity water injections. The other parameter is temperature, reservoir temperature. And we know that the uh, the low salinity water, uh, low salinity water uh, floodings is dependent on the some sort is dependent on the temperatures. When we increase the temperatures, which sh shows more uh, uh, significant actually increase in the higher um, uh, recovery or recovery. The last parameter is vitability. Uh, during the low water salinity floodings, core. Um, have been suggested to become more water wet as a mixed wet clay particles are released by the low salinity water. And uh, this is commonly accepted that uh, a mixed wet condition usually produces the least residual oil saturation after injection of several volumes. So, so this this is kind of uh, kind of uh, 
acceptable among the researchers in this area that the low salinity water injections uh, take the take the core, the fabric of the, let's say, the, 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 the gross media from the mixed wet or weak water wetness to or more water and the strong water wetness. There are also some field applications uh, of the loose salinity water injections. Uh, the successful field trials, uh, we can name the Omar field in Syria, when 10 to 15 percent original oil in place is reported. Uh, BB pilot test this method in the indicate field in the north slope, Alaska. Uh, on a thousand feet below spacings, they observe a very slightly moderate uh, decrease in the water cost from 95% to 92%. And uh, a significant residual oil saturation drop from 41% to 28%, which all in all resulted in a 10% additional oil recovery at the end. In contrast, we have some unsuccessful field trials in Russia, in the Syria, and in Norway. And, and some of this insignificant response to the low salinity water injections uh, related to the complexity of the geology and sometimes presence of the very saline aquifer that can mix with the low salinity water injection and, and try and, and, and increase the salinity of the water. We, we in, the, in our laboratory, we um, use the core flow experiments to further investigate the effect of the heavy end components of crude oil on the low salinity effects. Uh, we use three different uh, crude oils, uh, and uh, the brine salinity range from the 500 to oh, well over 100,000 ppm. And uh, mostly we wanted to see the effect of a timing on the low salinity effects and see if this process is time dependent or not. The motivation of this was come from this uh, came from this idea that any vitability alterations on the surface of grains require time. Similar to the core agents, when we keep the core saturated, fluid saturated core in the ovens at the reservoir temperature for 10 days or let's say two weeks, in order to restore the, uh, the original rotability, rock rotability. And now we want to see if the same time dependency is required for the uh, for the loose salinity effect or not. For this purpose, we use a typical core flow apparatus and we make sure that we use the maximum size of the core available to us. For experiment, we use the 16.5 inch long and 2.5 inch uh, diameter core. Uh, the full volume of the core was estimated to be around 252. The cores bear sandstones uh, with the permeability in the range of 20 to 30 millidorc, and the porosity was estimated to be around uh, 19. The, core, the clay content of the core was around 77%. And the reason why we use a, a big size core was that uh, the majority of the loose salinity core flood experiments in the literature are performed on a small core plug with a length of six to inch, uh, three to six inch. The issue with the small core plug is that the capillary end effects that can disturb the fluid uh, displacement in the porous media leads to overestimation of the low salinity effect. So we try to minimize that capillary end effect with the bigger size core. At the, at the same time, bigger pore volumes uh, can lead to the uh, more accurate Result. The crude oil samples were used for this set of experiments. They were designated as a crude oil A, Texas light crude oil, uh, crude oil B, Kuwait medium heavy crude oil, and crude oil C, uh, which was a synthetic oil. The synthetic crude oil is highly refined mineral oil. Uh, thus, uh, there is no uh, polar component in crude oil C. Three different brines uh, salinity were prepared. Uh, the salinity ranges from 500 to 122,000 ppm. The initial pH was said to be uh, 7.5, and the viscosity of the brine sample ranges from the 1.2 cp to 0 0.91 cp. We also measured the interfacial tensions between the crude oil and the brine samples. Uh, the observation shows that the IFD does not um, uh, IFD stay constant almost for all of the three brine samples and uh, uh, were not sensitive to brine salinity. This graph shows the oil recovery profile as a percentage of original oil in place versus pool volume 
injected brine for different salinities. So if you look at the, uh, let's say, if you look at the crude oil A, the core that's been saturated with crude oil A, a after brine injections of about four pool volumes, the ultimate recovery factors for all the three cases remain very similar to very close together. For the crude oil B, as you see here, right, um, the, the ultimate recovery for low salinity brine stay around 52.7% of original oil in place, which correspond to 7.6% original oil in place increase in recovery compared to the high salinity and also the uh, uh, ultra low salinity cases. So we see, we see these things, right, response from the crude oil B to the low salinity uh, bro injected brine. For the crude oil C, which is, uh, uh, which is actually is a mineral oil, very refined mineral oils, uh, we do not see any response to the low salinity or change in salinity of the brine. And, and, and for all these three cases, the ultimate recovery will stay around the 55%. Um, so, if you want to summarize what we saw in the uh, previous uh, slides, is that uh, for all these three crude oils, we see the different response to the changing in the salinity of the injected brine. For crude oil A and for uh, for for the refined mineral oils, uh, which crude oil C, we don't see we don't see any any changes, more or less similar profile or similar ultimate recovery, but. For the crude oil B, which is Kuwaitians, uh, we see a different uh, response to the loose salinity. And uh, the reason of this different response may be related to the chemical composition of the samples. Sample B actually is, contains, uh, contains a high percentage of heavy end components, uh, which uh, consequently, right, this crude oil is more reactive to the surface of the clay. In other words, it has a contain more uh, concentration of polar component, which is uh, making make it more more reactive to the uh, changing in the ion concentration of the uh, grain uh, particles. This result shows that the crude oil with different sort of fractions responds differently to the uh, low salinity water floodings among different hydrocarbons groups. Polar compounds like asphalt and resins are more reactive one uh, on the surface of the clay, and the wetting property of crude oil is mainly governed by these elements. So this this graph shows the drawdown pressures as a function of the pool volume injected brine for each core fluid experiment. Uh, for the crude oil A, uh, we see a steady inc uh, increase in the uh, pressure drops until the breakthrough, and after that, we see a decline in the pressure drop. For crude oil B, uh, the story is different. We, after the breakthrough, we don't see a steady decline. Instead, we see uh, the significant fluctuations in the delta P along the core, which that's related to the uh, poor throat blockage. Uh, for, for this type of the crude oil we have. Uh, for a uh, 500 ppm case, as you see here, right, this delta P stand above the, the, the two other cases, which means that the uh, poor throat block is more severe in that case, in this case. Uh, but however, from the other side, we know that uh, the ultimate recovery for this case is lower compared to the less than 10,000 ppm. This is interesting observation because that's, this suggests that the uh, clay particle movement may be the side effect of the low salinity water floodings, but not the cause. And having the higher, for example, clay particle movement does not correspond to the uh, positive uh, response to the um, low water salinity case. And um, the, the other two graphs here show is the uh, uh, effluent pH as a function of poor volumes. For all the, all the tests we have done on the crude oil A and crude oil B, the brine pH value was close to neutral and did not show any uh, meaningful changes or direction or direct correlations with the injected brine salinity. In different set of experiments, we try to investigate the effect of timing on the, on, on the loose salinity uh, effect. Uh, for this purpose, um, we inject brine with salinity of 10,000 ppm for all three types of crude oil. Uh, of about four pool volumes until the oil productions drop to zero. For all these three cases, drop to zero. And uh, that means that the, 
oil phase in the core in the in the in, in the in the core it become immobile so it reduces the residual oil saturations next we stopped the water injection brine injections we terminate the injections and we kept the core inside the core holder for two weeks and after two weeks we resume the water injections and we wanted to see how this is going to affect the the, the, the the processes so here you see the results uh, for sample A, after resuming the uh, brine injections, uh, less than 1% original oil in place of additional oil was recovered. However, the story is a little bit different for the, uh, uh, for the crude oil B. When you see here, there is a significant increase in the original oil in place, recovery factors from 53 to almost 60.2%, which means 7% increasing of the oil recovery. This is a remarkable observation that shows the effect of the exposure time between the immobile residual crude oils and the low salinity brine. It should be noted that the core sample contains 5% kaolinite, which is well known as the oil wet clay. So we assuming the core, we believe that the core is, is kind of a, a, a mixed oil wet and water wet, or at the best is, is, is weak water wet. So this result shows how much timing is important in the low salinity uh, uh, water floodings. Uh, for the field amplifications, I don't think that's going to change anything because in the field, the process of displacement is a very slow process compared to the labs. So more or less all these changes will happen automatically in the, in, in the field, maybe at the back of the uh, waterfront. But uh, for the laboratory testing, we should be very careful to design, uh, uh, to give a proper timing uh, for uh, any changes that will take place right uh, uh, on, the, on, the, on the surface of the grains or in the core. In conclusions, we studied the effect of the pH uh, and also the uh, fine particle productions and we find out the uh, that this data does not confirm that the pH or the clay particles, the attachment uh, play key role in the additional or recovery during the low salinity water injections. Uh, a two weeks uh, two weeks ces cessations in the uh, injection of the low salinity brine added 7.6 percent original oil in place to the medium uh, heavy crude oil samples. This corresponds to additional 4.9 percent further reductions in the residual oil saturations. Uh, we can conclude that the loose salinity mechanism seems to be a time dependence. Further investigation may require. This is an important observation that as a new controlling factor to the loose salinity water injections. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, that was the end of my presentation.